everyone, welcome back. Deft here. So let's go ahead and get into episode two of Enshrouded. So you can see I went ahead and added a couple more chests. This is what I found appropriate for last time just to keep us moving. So if you're about to head out and you're just going straight through the first video, go ahead and make sure you repair all your equipment by clicking on the workbench. Uh, first things before we can go get the blacksmith and rescue this guy. Sorry, yeah, real quick, I did clear cut out here, so... <laughs> There might be some trees missing, but the first thing we have to do is we need to go get some supplies from down here so we can build the glider and the grappling hook so we can reach the guy. So in order to do that, we're going to approach this big bridge right in front of our build. Now we can go up the bridge and do a little bit of looting if we want to, but we're actually going to be using this path off to the side right here to go into the shroud itself. But this is Braylon Bridge. It's a new marker now, so we can come up here, like I said, we can do a little bit of looting. But we can't get across, if you notice. It needs a grapple hook, and there's instructions on that. But to build the grapple hook, we need supplies. Oh, and we have some arrows right here we can collect. I don't really need any arrows, I built a bunch already. So let's head over to these tents, and I believe there's a note in one of them, so we need to loot this up. I think we need some more cloth, so I'm going to go ahead and smash everything in these tents, but I'll do that after we find the note. It notes right here. Captain's Journal, Day 6. There's also a chest here. It's got some wooden arrows in it. I did notice when I reloaded my game, because I had to log out to do editing, that everything respawned, and all the chests filled back up. So I don't know if that's a new thing since the last two patches or what happened. And I did miss some loot, so actually let's run back over here to where we first ran through this city. So if you actually watched the first video, you would have seen that I put a note in it because I missed something. I missed a secret passage. Like I said, there's secret passages and stuff everywhere. I'm sure I've missed plenty. But this one I saw while I was editing, so let me figure out where it's at again. Okay, yeah, so it's right here on the first video, right when we came out the cave, we came here into this room. You see how this wall looks different? And look for these in every building you come to because they're everywhere. So we're going to go ahead and press E against that and it'll open. And there's a chest inside of here. I just wanted to cover that because that's a secret passage and they're really, really hard to find and see. And later on, once you get the right craftsmen and NPCs, we can actually build those in our own house. In case you want to hide loot from your friends. But like you can see, you know, we smashed this table. It respawned. Everything's back 100%. I don't think that happened on my other game. So maybe that changed with the patch they just pushed out today. So let's head back down to those tents. Well, actually, I say head back to the tents. We're going to go back to the house. I found something else that I didn't even find on my first game. All right, so our house is right here. It actually lined up with a road. That's crazy to me. <laughs> that, I didn't even intend for that to happen. But yeah, our door lined right up with the path. Anyways, let's come over into this little shroud right here. There's a path right here. I don't know if there's any loot in there or not. I didn't go down yet. But we do have a staircase here, so let's check this out. And it's really dark. There's an enemy in here, so we need to fight this guy. Two enemies. Okay, they're down. Let's grab their loot. You're going to need the cloth and these orbs in a minute, so make sure you're saving those. And then we have these giant bubbles. I'm going to get rid of these, so that's a good reason to have the bow. So just stand as far away as you can, because the big ones I want to say explode pretty, yeah, pretty good distance. Right, those are all gone. Let's get the small one out of the way. Looks like we have some loot right here. So, more orbs. Uh, we have a rusty short sword. Save all your weapons, even if you don't want to use it. They have a purpose later on. And then we'll get our torch out. Looks like there's another door here. I don't know. Let's we'll see if we can smash through it. Oh, yep. It shrouded us, though. So, so if you use the axe, so the axe that we built, just a regular axe, it actually works really good for demolishing things. So, if you're trying to harvest different items. Yeah, it's like a one tap. It's just really slow and has a really close range. There should be something good in here, right? So I'm definitely going to smash everything in this room, but we're looking for chests. So there's a chest right here. Healing potion and a bandage. There's some loot on this shelf. And these books you can dismantle. I don't know what they're for. I just know they're all over the place. And it just gives you old books. I don't know if there's a purpose to them or not, so I've collected a bunch. Mostly I just leave them laying around. So I'm going to smash this, then we'll head back to the tents after we drop all our loot. Okay, so I lied. As soon as I started heading towards the house, it reminded me of what I wanted. Alright, so again, the house is right here, the cave's back there. Now up here, when I was cutting trees and chasing down goats to get some hide, I noticed the cave. I didn't even find this on the live playthrough I did, the live stream the other day. I, did, I saw the red glow at night, so it's right here above this fence. Hopefully we don't fall down that cliff. But yeah, I saw this, so let's go ahead and gather that, whatever it is. Usually if you follow paths, they'll lead, lead you places, so it's always a good thing to do. 
So here's a note on the War of the Alchemist Theories 2 by Balthazar. Okay, and then right above this cave, I was jumping to see if there's anything else. There's a chest right here, actually. Let's look at that. It's got a health potion and wooden arrows. Also, if you want to harvest these beehives, if you have a bow, and they're up high like this one is, just use your bow to shoot it. In case you want to get some wax and stuff to build candles with. So we're back by the tents right now. As you can see right here, the bridge is to our left. So we're going to head down the path right here. You can just slide down the hill, but we're going to take the path just so we don't miss anything. So right here is a note in the chest. We can read that note. Open the chest, see what we get. So another health potion. There's a torch here if you want to take that. We don't need it. We'll, I mean, we can just grab it to grab it. Right? Again, smash stuff if you want. You can get some cloth rags that way. Maybe find some metal if you're lucky. And then we're going to continue down the path. This path will lead us into the shroud. So if you're in the shroud and you need a rest, just come back to right here to reset your timer. And the reason we're going to the shroud is we need to get materials. So let's go over that. I believe we need some of the stuff that's on this. I can't remember exactly. Let's knock it down. Actually, it's better for tree like items like this to use your big axe. You just hold left mouse button and he'll rapidly cut it down. So that gave us shroud liquid. Yeah, so we need shroud liquid, but there's a better way to get liquid. I want to see if you can get them off these little bubbles. Yep, so that gave us shroud li liquid. Let's go ahead and grab a bunch of it so you make sure you have enough. The other thing we need is shroud wood. So any trees like this you see here, cut them down. You're going to need a little bit of that. I don't remember how much exactly. Also, if you follow the path straight down, it'll bring you to this little camp. There are enemies here, so be ready to fight them. Alright, so we just killed this guy. He dropped us a ring. Sigil ring of the Elder Guard. 8 stamina, 10 health. Let's take that for sure. And then we go ahead and equip it by pressing B. Right click. Equip. Don't hit delete. There's some loot here too, so we'll search his dead body. And then we can smash up all this stuff. Check it for loot metal. See if we can find anything good. There is one item here I wanted to cover, which is right here on this table. If you use this, it'll restore your time. I don't know if it respawns or not, because I've only used one before and I've never had to go back to that area again. So anytime you see little tents, buildings, you want to definitely go search those. You might find some notes. And then you can search that bubble. So we're going to blow it up. And again, I can't stress this enough. Make sure you pay attention to your timer and leave yourself enough time to get out. All right, so we looted this one. They don't all have loot, but some of them do. So I'm going to go ahead and gather up some wood, get some supplies from this camp really quick. Yeah, so we're over here at Rookmore. It's pretty close to where we just came from in the shroud. So if you head down past the bridge to those first tents, follow the path. It'll bring you straight to Rookmore, which is right here. And the reason I came here is I think we're going to need a little bit of scrap metal. So I wanted to go ahead and clear this camp and get some of the metal off these guys. So you need to be careful here. That's why I also have my bow so I can range attack a lot of these guys. But watch out for these red barrels. That's what I wanted to go over. So you can sneak by pressing C, as in Charlie, and using these bushes. And you can see there's an enemy right in front of us. But these red barrels right here will explode. So you can bait them near the barrels and then explode the barrels from a distance. Just be careful because these will one-shot you here. And these enemies are level 3, so they're a little bit stronger. There might be some level 5s in here as well. There's also a bunch of treasure chests and loot. I don't think I'm going to cover all that in this area. Just make sure to clear every building, go through all the things. If I find a secret passage or something like that, I'll probably cover that. But it's pretty basic. We're just going to smash everything in here, all the barrels and things, to try to get some of the scrap metal. So let's go ahead and get that started. Oh yeah, watch out for these little traps too. You can disarm them. And like, uh, I guess we can cover the bow too. So if you have the bow, if you just left mouse button while you targeted on them, it'll attack them. And then you can just combat roll away if you need to. Otherwise you need to learn the timing of them and how to parry. And when you kill those guys, like that one, they do have scrap metal on them sometimes. So like I said, I'm going to clear this out, kill all these guys, and try to get some scrap metal put together. So once that's done, I will see you guys back at camp, and we will put that glider and the grapple hook together, and then go after the, Al not the Alchemist, the blacksmith. And a quick reminder, like I said in the last video, you can find beds all over the place. So we're still in Rookmore. We can sleep right here in this bed if we want to speed up the nighttime, because it's really dark right now. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see time travels faster. We're at 60% speed. And 
and the sun's up so we're up and then right here inside of work more this little hidden passage like i said it's not hidden but it's filled in with rock so we need to use bombs to clear that so that's why i told you to find bombs usually if you find these you'll find bombs somewhere nearby as well i know i keep saying we're gonna head back to base but another thing i wanted to cover too that's important to know for when you're out in the field is when you see these little these little giant i say little these giant anvils like this you can repair your equipment so you don't have to go all the way back home because you will be using up a ton of durability as you explore. Now that we're back at the base, let's go ahead and make the things that we need. So we needed the grappling hook and the glider. So let's go ahead and get to those. So we'll come to the crafting bench, click on glider. Let's go ahead and build one of those. And then we'll click on grappling hook and build that. You're going to need both of these a lot throughout the game. We did unlock a lot more stuff too. If you noticed, we found nails, which opened up a lot of recipes. We found the nails while looting that city. Then we need to go to our backpack and we can check and see and make sure that stuff equipped. Here's the grappling hook. So we'll go ahead and equip that. And the same thing with the glider, right click it and equip. Then if we go to our character, you can see those slots have been filled. From there, drop your loot off and then head back to the bridge. Once you're back at the bridge, come here, you'll see that there's an E button there. So you, all you have to do is press E and you should grapple right to it. And then the ladder, I just like to jump down to save time. You can smash all this stuff if you want. You might get lucky and find some more scrap metal. As always, if you need scrap metal, just go find a camp. Let's kill, kill the scavengers, and they will usually drop scrap metal for you. And then we're going to make our way across here, trying to be careful. I didn't, I've never checked down on the bottom of this, but we'll, I don't think there's anything down there. I don't see any chests or anything, so I think it's just to catch us while we're walking across that. And we can loot this body right here. Right, so right here is one of the points I was talking about. You can swing across some chasms using a grappling hook. Be on the lookout for these places. And then that wire mesh right in front of me, you can climb up that. Just make sure your stamina is good because some of them will drop you into, to your death. And get good at grappling because you're going to need it later in the game. And there's a chest down here at the bottom. That's why I'm dropping down here. Two bandages. So like right here, this is the wire mesh I was talking about. So just jump up to it or walk up to it and you'll grab onto it. And when you grapple... And go to hit a climb point, make sure your stamina is full. That's another reason I said you might want to rest all the way up and get your comfort up high. So then we're going to go swing across, kind of like Castlevania, if you ever played that game. Here, watch out for these traps, and sometimes there's mobs around here, so be careful. Personally, I like to disarm these, so if I come back through here at nighttime, I don't have to worry about stepping on them. On my last save, they lasted even after I opened and closed the game. This time, I don't know, since everything's respawning. You need to rest or move the night along. There's a bed here. And here's an enemy. So this is an Arvalis scavenger. So make sure you uh, try to dodge the shots if you can. They do kind of track, so it's usually better just to jump on them and beat them to death. And then we'll just walk across the bridge. We're going to come up here, take the left path. So that's a tower. We're going to go over that later. That'll probably be a full episode just by itself. It's one of the first fast travel points. So then we're going to have to clear this camp here. There's going to be enemies here. It's also going to go over sneak. Hit points are kind of low. Let's go ahead and eat a berry. You don't want to try to heal while in a fight unless you have potions. Potions are instant. Everything else takes a second and slows you down. You'll probably get caught before you get it off. I want to say there's two or three enemies here. You can, like, again, you can use the bushes to sneak up on them. What we're going to do is, uh, I guess we can sneak for a second, because they do have really good... And see, we're being attacked by bees at the worst possible moment. <laughs> so if you ever see what looks like a cloud of dust, that's a beehive swarm coming for you. They can hurt you pretty bad, so make sure you go ahead and kill them off. And like I said, worst time, because it alerted the enemies to us. Let me see if I can bait them over here to this explosive barrel, and then we're just going to try to kill them by shooting the barrel. And I missed. <laughs> Their attack patterns are easy to predict, though, so if you just pay attention, you'll get used to them. And you'll learn when you can get attacks off. So you do this one swing, occasionally they do that. Usually they do multiple attacks. 
So you get one strike in when he does that. If they do the spin, you can get two hits in usually. And then you stun him. A lot of times you can get two hits off of a stun too. Now he's full stun, but you gotta watch out for the other guy. Usually he won't just sit there and watch. <laughs> so the spin, so you can get two in. Don't just sit there to try to block you because they can break your block. And they do a lot of damage. And if they taunt you, normally you can get a hit or two in that way. And then if he blocks, just back off. And you can try to parry the whole time if you want. It's just safer to back up in my opinion right now because we're low level and our armor's weak. Right, he's down. Let's go ahead and loot their bodies for the scrap metal and the cloth. We're going to need a lot of that in just a minute. And of course now it's night time, so... <laughs> I might run back over to that. Yeah, I'm gonna run back over that bed and rest until the night time passes. Alright guys, so we're back over here. Now the blacksmith is the easiest one to get out of all the uh, NPCs. So we're going to go ahead and repair our equipment right here. Over here is a note, so let's grab that. And a lot of times there's a lot of loot around, so make sure you look everywhere. Like there's a ladder here, usually there's a purpose for that, so you always want to check up the stairs. We definitely want to smash all these bells right here. They'll give us some loot, possibly some metal. There's a chest right here. Let's grab that for some bombs, and then we can read those note. So we just got some new lore. Again, you just watch your experience points go up, so I'm going to smash all this really quick. And now that we have the glider, you can jump off of ledges and hit spacebar twice and you can glide places. It's not perfect and it gets kind of rough, but you'll have to use it throughout the game to get to certain areas. So make sure you get good at it. Same thing with the grapple. Also, if you die, you'll keep your gear on you most of the time, but you will drop a lot of your loot. So just go back to the place you died, and there should be a tombstone there marking you, and you can get your loot back. If you're on multiplayer, they can take your loot. That's right, so a new location, Sharded Ancient Vault Blacksmith. So whenever you see these vaults, they're usually something important inside, so you definitely want to go in there and loot. And we have one enemy in front of us, we're going to take him out. A lot of times inside of these buildings too, you'll find loot on these bodies and things, or you can smash the bodies and get bone. And then we have another note right here, let's read that. And then we're going to smash this to get some loot out of these bundles of things. So if you just want to run in here and dodge everything and grab the NPC, you're looking for these glowing canisters like this. So we're going to activate that, Awaken Survivor. Oswald Anders the blacksmith is now awakened. And we got the recipe for the summoning staff. We'll have to use that in order to bring him to our base. Hey, when you see these vases like this, they're kind of good to break. They can drop you sheet metal, which is rare. But they do take a while to break. Like that one just gave us water and metal scraps. And now that we have the blacksmith, we're unlocking all kinds of recipes like metal sheets, nails, all the good stuff.
and then come over here to this corner there's a secret door right here you can just barely make it out because it's kind of glowing there's usually a lot of these or not a lot but there's a couple of these in some of the buildings so make sure you look for them just press the e to open that and find a chest it needs a lock pick so again make sure you have lock picks on you they're made out of scrap metal and we just got a masterful mace uncommon So from here you can run back to your base if you want or if you read the note here it tells you you can fast travel using your map which is going to come in handy so you don't have to run all the way back and forth constantly. So we'll just press M for map. You can scroll out using your mouse wheel. You can see some of these notes we have that's from quests and notes that we found laying around and there's going to be things there you're going to want to collect. Here you can see home level 1 that's the current level of our flame. Click on that and then you can fast travel. And now we're back home. When you see these exclamation marks above the NPCs or the fire, usually it wants you to talk to it. So let's go ahead and commune with the flame. The survivor will be a worthy addition to our cause. Place them into the world with a summoning staff, which you can craft from simple twigs. So before you craft, make sure you have space in your inventory. Come into your personal crafting menu, click on summoning staff, space to craft it, just like usual. Now we have the staff, let's find it, make sure it's on the hotkey. Go to 2, it's right here. And wherever you summon the NPCs where he's going to hang out, mine didn't walk around or move, so just find you a spot where they're not going to take up space where you plan to build. Press tab and you can select the NPC you want. I think this is how you move them around if you want to put them elsewhere. And we'll select him and we'll just set him right here out of the way. Oi! And we now have Oswald the blacksmith. So we can talk to him, you can see he wants something what from us. Typically they'll give us quests too, so let's go ahead and talk to them. So crafting first gear. <laughs> Took you long enough to find me, look at you, weak and puny, and they call you Flameborn. First thing you need is a weapon. Lucky you woke me up first. Crafting a scrappy sword or spike club will serve us well. And then we'll go ahead and do cleansing fire. Ah. Ember Veil can still be saved. Where there's ash, there's embers, kid. The shroud suffocates the valley, so seek the elixir well with your new gear and raise the root of our misery. Ignite the depths, set this evil ablaze. Go on, I'm counting on you, Flameborn. And then we have Well Rested as well. I'm not going to keep reading all these because they go on and on and on. So you can just pause for a second if you need to. And we just got tons of experience from accepting these quests and some of them have been completed. He's going to want us to go clear the Elixir Well, which we'll do in the next episode. And we can go into Craft right here. Uh, for him, there's production places we can make the Forge, the Charcoal Kiln. We'll need the Kiln to make some stuff later on because that's going to allow us to make Charcoal. Forge is going to allow us to make stuff too. So here it needs stone, tin metal scrap, charcoal, wood logs. So the stuff's not cheap. Uh, you can make nails if you need nails using metal scraps. Uh, the felling axe is the scrappy axe right here. It's pretty good. It's a lot better than your current basic axe as far as cutting trees and things go. Plus it has more durability and damage. Same thing with the pickaxe. You can also have it make you lock picks. And I want to say the lock picks are cheaper with him. I think on us it's two and I think for him it's one. One-handed weapons, again, look at the top here. You can see the number two. That means there's two items. So you have the spike club and the scrappy sword. I like using the scrappy sword, so I need to grab some nails. And then he also has our first armor set, which is going to be the fur armor set. So we're going to want to make this. So we're going to need torn cloth, animal fur, string, and metal scraps. And this is what I was telling you to save up for. So let's go ahead and get all of our materials together and get our new armor made. Because you want to get the new armor before you go to clear. It's not impossible to clear it, but the new armor is definitely going to help you a lot. Especially if you get hit one time. I don't know if I went over this either. So if you're moving stuff in and out of a chest, the instructions are listed here of how to do it. But hold down shift and then left click and it'll move the whole stack.
Alright, so let's go ahead and make our scrappy sword because I want to get my damage up. It's 16 damage. It's a lot better than using our hatchet. It's also a little bit faster. Right, so we now have our new sword and we completed his quest. Let's go ahead and talk to him again. Make sure he's done with that. Okay, he's good and happy. Now let's make our fur armor set. So as you can see, the stats on this is going to be much better than what we currently have. Same thing as before, let's go into our menu and go ahead and equip our new gear. Just right click on it and then tell it to equip. And then let's put our sword where our hatchet is. We don't need the hatchet anymore. And if you're wondering why I have so many crates, I'll show you. So as you can see, we've, I've been raiding the, the camp and everything else, and we're getting armor, weapons, and all kinds of stuff. You're going to want to save these, and you'll see why later. Then we also want to go ahead and get a charcoal kiln made so that we can make the charcoal we need. So we need 10 pieces of charcoal in order to make the forge. All right, so that's going to go to our hot bar. We're going to lay that out. So I'm just going to set mine over here, kind of close to him. And from there, we can craft using this. And go through the instructions we'll just skip those for now so here you can click on the bottom right here and browse recipes for when you get multiple recipes if you select that recipe that's what it's going to make so here it's going to need wood logs and dirt so now you see why i said save your dirt so we'll go ahead and move i don't know uh 250 logs over because it these recipes are expensive it's 17 wood logs for the charcoal so let's go ahead and move this over and then we'll have to grab our dirt And then it's going to start auto crafting and you want to queue this up before you go to clear the veil or the shroud because it's going to take a while it's like five minutes per and it's got 14 queued right now so that's enough to get us to where we can make the forge now let's commune with the flame because it wants something from us that tells us to go seek out more survivors so if you open your journal and you go to craftspeople you can see how many npcs there are so like right here and the ones that are great blacked out are the ones that we don't have yet so there's our new armor new sword so we're ready to go now as long as we have enough arrows because i prefer to use arrows for this boss fight that's coming up and i think that's all we're going to do on this episode i'm trying to remember if there's anything else let's check the journal really quick see what quests we have so clear the elixir well claim a spot for your base so we need to it says speak to the flame in our base i don't know why we just talked to it maybe it's just waiting for it oh no it's at least the completed ones my bad all right so yeah all we have left to do now is clear the elixir well and that'll open up some more quest lines for us and this tells you what rewards you get some of the quests come with special rewards like this one comes with a trophy and a bunch of experience points so we're slowly building up skill points. We'll go over those maybe after the... Yeah, we only have two, so we'll wait and go over those later. So we're going to call it quits there. Like I said, we'll clear the elixir well in the next one. We'll get the forge built, and that'll probably be the extent of that episode. I'm not sure what we'll do after that one. Maybe go for the tower or another NPC. It just depends on what the quest line takes us to. As always, guys, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to like and subscribe button, and I'll catch you on the next one.